Welcome to Zach DTV, the place for interesting news from around the net. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at a group of researchers who sent a message to a nearby planet. And if you want more interesting news like this, five days a week, make sure to click that subscribe button so you know when I upload something new. Let's get right into this. The name of the project is Sonar Calling. It was headed up by the Sonar Organization, who teamed up with METI, M-E-T-I, that's Messaging Extraterrestrial Intelligence. They're an offshoot of SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. And they also got together with the Institute of Space Studies, Catalonia. They use the ISCAT antenna. That's a European Incoherent Scattered Scientific Association antenna, located in Tromso, Norway. And what they did was send a huge batch signal towards Luton's star. It's a star that's located about 12 and a half light years away from us here on Earth. They did this because one of the two planets they found orbiting the star is in the star's habitable zone. That's planet GJ273b. These reside in the uh, Canis constellation, if you want to get out there and take a glance at it yourself. Now planet GJ273b is nearly three times the size of Earth. So if it is inhabited and these people get our signal, can you imagine what they're going to look like? Could you imagine if we grew up in three times the gravity? Would we all be built like dwarves? I'm guessing so. This message that was sent includes information on counting, arithmetic, geometry, and trigonometry, a description of the radio waves that are carrying the signal, as well as a tutorial on timekeeping and building clocks. They did that to see if the intelligent life that may live on this planet keeps track of time and does their math in similar ways that we do. These broadcast signals also include music from artists worldwide. 16 different ones, in fact. The signal was sent on three different days in October, but they just announced it today that the first round had been completed. In fact, in the description below, I'll put a link to the Sonar Calling website. They even have a timeline on there of how far out the wave is and when it's gonna reach the target star. I suggest checking it out. It's pretty neat to look at. They also have an area in there if you wanna write a song or something and get it out on the transmission too. There's a second batch going out here sometime in the future and you can submit your project to have it beamed at that star. See, maybe you can help bring on the end of the world through extraterrestrial invaders. Now, of course, the goal of this is to contact extraterrestrial life. Unfortunately, that's probably not very likely. If you look at this as the uh, zoo theory, where we are being watched by neighboring planets, this would be a good example of uh, one of the planets that's habitable that could be keeping an eye on us to see what we're doing. And when asked about finding an alien race, Douglas Vakok, V-A-K-O-C-H, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, is the president of METI. I think that's an unlikely outcome, but it would be a welcome outcome. Well, there you have it though. We have officially sent a message to another planet about 12 and a half light years away from here. We could hear back from them as early as 25 years from now. So that is in a lot of our lifetimes. I just hope we get a message back and not an invasion fleet. What do you guys think? Is it safe to try to contact extraterrestrial life? Or should we even try to hide? Because our radio signals are out there, our TV signals are out there. This stuff's floating around in space. Somebody's gonna find us eventually. Why not target who gets to find us? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit that like button. It'll really help my channel grow. I do this five days a week. That's Monday through Friday. So I hope to see you here again. And until next time, and until next time, have fun and uh, be safe.